17. This matter of Huadu practice can be likened to a mosquito biting an iron bull. The mosquito does not try to figure out, do I do it this way or that? Its needle-like mouth pressed firmly on the impenetrable, it risks body and life, and in one moment, penetrating through with its whole being. Commentary This teaching recalls the point made earlier about the live word. It is restated here in order to protect those who look deeply into the live word from regressing in their practice. An eminent teacher said, those who practice Zen must penetrate thoroughly the gate of the patriarchs. In other words, to attain profound enlightenment, simply cut off the mind road. 18. Correct meditation practice is much like tuning the strings of an old lute. Find the right chord between too tight and too loose, and beautiful music can appear but overexertion makes you prone to all kinds of attachment, while negligent, inattentive practice leads only to deeper ignorance. It is best to practice Zen with a calm and clear mind, constantly attentive and not moving. Commentary Any lute player can tell you that the strings of a harp must be properly tuned, neither too tight nor too loose, in order to make beautiful music. Practicing meditation follows the same principle. Impetuous practice makes you overstimulated and distempered, while slackened practice leaves you dulled and vague, and leads you right into the cave of demons. When your practice is neither too slow nor too fast, you will find the mysteriously subtle balance in it. Nineteen. There will eventually be a point in your practice when you do not know you are walking even as you walk, and do not know you are sitting even as you sit. In this situation, Mara's legions of the 84,000 demons guarding the gates of the six sense faculties will rise up and attack you the moment any kind of mind appears. But when any kind of mind does not appear, what harm can they do? Commentary Mara is the name of a ghost or demon that actually relishes the suffering of birth and death. 84,000 demons means the 84 kinds of suffering that beset sentient beings. Mara originally has no self-nature, but appears only when practitioners lose their fundamentally pure and clear moment mind. Sentient beings are attached to whatever appears, so they yield to the circumstances of Mara. True students of the way are not deluded by appearances, so they confront Mara. They are not taken in by delusive circumstances. This is why it is said, the steeper the path is, the more demons you will find. When delusions appear in your mind, demons seem to appear before you too. A practitioner once hacked at his own leg during meditation when he saw a mourner and another encountered a pig and grabbed his own nose. If your mind does not move, however, all the diabolical skills of Mara employed against your mind will come to nothing, like someone trying to cut water with a sword or to blow away a ray of sunshine. An ancient adage says, A crack in the wall will let the wind blow in. A crack in the mind lets demons sneak in. Twenty, when any kind of mind appears, this is the entrance of the demon king. The mind that does not appear is the five skandhas demon. The mind that both appears and does not appear is the mara of passions. Yet in true dharma, these so-called demons do not, in fact, exist. Commentary, no mind is the Buddha way while all conceptual discrimination is the way of demons. In any event, the existence of demons is just the working of a dream. Why worry and agonize over it so much? 